Over the past few months, I have produced a handful of videos about the amazing kids shows created by the brothers Sid and Marty Croft. And because I've often mentioned HR Puffin stuff without fail, sooner or later someone in the comments section will suggest that I make a video about Jack Wilde. Part of me really hasn't wanted to do it, mostly because I know how the darn story ends. That said, I've been doing a little more research and I've come to the conclusion that things aren't always as they appear to be. So let's talk about HR Puffin stuff for just a moment. The Croft brothers got the inspiration for this show from some of the work that they did for the 1968 World's Fair. They took those ideas and fleshed it out into the program that debuted in 1969. Jack played Jimmy, an 11 year old boy who becomes shipwrecked on a magical living island. Jimmy's stranded there due to the nefarious designs of Witchy Poo, who is played by the amazing Billy Hayes. It turns out that Witchy Poo knows that Jimmy has a magic flute and she wants it all for her own. While there were only 17 episodes of this show ever produced, yeah, just one season, because it was broadcast for such a long time on TV, it feels like there were way more episodes than there actually were. I know that Jack was proud of his work on this show, but probably not as proud as he was of the work that he did on the movie Oliver, where he played the Artful Dodger. This musical was so big in the late 60s, as you can see from the poster, it won six Oscars, including Best Picture, and Jack was nominated for an Academy Award in the category of Best Supporting Actor. Pretty awesome stuff for anyone, let alone a kid of Jack's age. Throughout his career, Jack would look for opportunities to work again with friends like Mark Lester and Ron Moody, who played Oliver Twist and Fagin, respectively. One of those opportunities occurred just a couple of years later when Jack starred with Mark Lester in the coming-of-age romance called Melody. Although the film was a box office disappointment in both the U.S. and Britain, it turned out to be a huge hit in Japan of all places. I really don't remember this film and to this day I haven't seen it. I have, however, heard many of the songs that came from the film's musical soundtrack. These songs include the hit singles To Love Somebody and First of May by the Bee Gees, as well as the Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young hit Teach Your Children. While pursuing a motion picture and TV career, Jack was also creating music. During the early 70s, he released three albums. He had a minor hit in the UK with the single Some Beautiful, but he wasn't ever really able to crack the music charts in the US. Still, the songs that I've listened to, thank heavens for all of the streaming options, that we have available these days. They're enjoyable, and if you're a fan of Jack's work, well, they're worth the time. Jack's last album was released in 1972, and I've got to think that he had to be a little disappointed by the frosty reception of all three albums. He had been marketed in both the US and the UK as a teen heartthrob, but he'd never really delivered the musical hits the way that David Casty, Bobby Sherman, or Donny Osmond had. When you couple that kind of pressure with the box office non-starter that was his 1973 film, The 14, well, you could see why, by the age of 21, Jack was losing a battle with inner demons, and more specifically, whatever was compelling him to drink. At such a young age, Jack was already a diagnosed alcoholic. Fortunately, Jack had friends like Mark Lester who would from time to time check in on him. So although the job offers were starting to dry up, Jack never felt like he was without friends. For most of his career, Jack had always looked young. For heaven's sakes, when he was filming H.R. Puff and stuff, the guy was 17 years old. It's kind of amazing that when the years finally did catch up to Jack, they really caught up to him in a hard way. At times later on in life, he looked even older than he really was. At some point, as Jack's marriage fell apart and he began to get feedback that opportunities were being missed because of his reputation as someone who wasn't reliable due to health issues related to alcoholism, Jack said no more. He was resolute. He would change his life. Even during his most challenging times, Jack was always something of an optimist, and his ability to look forward in a positive way, always looking at the bright side of things, well, that would prove invaluable throughout his life. And once Jack was able to turn things around, good things did start to happen. In 1991, Jack scored a role in Kevin Costner's Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. It was a small role, but it was a fun role. Much the Miller's son. 
one of Robin's Merry Men. And Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves was a major Hollywood motion picture and a huge box office hit. Jack was thrilled at the opportunity to perform in such a visible piece of entertainment again. Jack met his second wife Claire in 1995 and although they did not formally marry until a decade later, the two were inseparable from the time that they met. They were both doing a type of British theater called pantomime. From everything I've read, it's kind of like vaudeville, but a little bit different. I know that's a lousy way to describe it, but it's the best I can do. Anyway, meeting Claire provided Jack with even extra incentive to stay sober. He wanted to be the man that this beautiful lady deserved, and he was. He was a strong human being, a caring human being, someone that you would want to be friends with. Five years after meeting Claire, Jack would be diagnosed with oral cancer. It was a tough blow, but Jack wouldn't go down without a fight. While he was doing that, he spent time working on his autobiography. If you'd like to read it, you can get it on Amazon. I'll post a link to it in this video's description. Jack succumbed to cancer on March 1st, 2006. As I've already said, he did not go down without a fight. He had his vocal cords removed, part of his tongue. It was tough, and Claire was with him to the very end. Her love buoyed both of them up through some pretty rough moments. I've read some of the interviews with Claire that are out there on the net, and it's clear that these two loved each other very, very much. And when you couple that with the career that Jack had, the joy that he provided through his performances in music, movies, and TV, well, that's a story well worth telling. Rest in peace, Jack Wilde. It was a life well lived. Wow, I am still scratching my head over how young Jack actually looked on HR Puff and stuff. 17 years old, that's crazy. You know, it wasn't my favorite Croft show, but it was definitely a memorable one. Now this one, this one right here is my favorite Croft show. Click on that link for more information. Also, feel free to leave your memories in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this video, why not consider subscribing to the channel? But most importantly, and as always, thanks so much for watching.